that means we bring in the oldest guy in the uh, <laughs> uh, review tonight as far as Zooming. I hope he knows how to Zoom. I assume uh, he does. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Oh, never better there, Gar. You know, you, despite what you say about me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Coming off the, uh, the practice court uh, just about, what, a half hour ago? Yeah, we uh, just got off. Um, you know, I got done beating them up and uh, and and came in here. They weren't too bloody today. <laughs> Fran, Fran, talk about how difficult it is to to practice and and uh, go through all of the things you need to do to protect everybody. Uh, how tough has it been? Yeah, and the different phases that we've had to go through, and then also not having everybody here at the same time. Um, you know, the one phase that we did have. Uh, where you could not share the basketball. Now, some of our guys like that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was coming. <laughs> but they, they like I, COVID. With my, with my offense, I don't like that phase. I like them to share the basketball. So, um, yeah, you know, it, it's just been it's been interesting uh, to say the least. Uh, but I, I can say this: that now that we're through all the phases, we've been. Um, I guess today was our sixth practice. <clears throat> our, our guys are real excited about the season now that we have a schedule. Um, they're, they're just very happy to be shooting towards something and, and working towards something. And uh, hopefully there's, there's no disruptions. Fran, with Kia, we talked a little bit about, about the, uh, the new re, uh, league realignment uh, because of COVID. Uh, I know you're probably not ecstatic about uh, playing as many games against Bucknell and Lehigh as you have to. Um, but I think it was probably a, a good solution. Yeah, as I said earlier, I, I really hope we play all 16 games. That's my, and then obviously the playoffs. Uh, I haven't really, as I look at the schedule, it's very challenging. There's no doubt. Some of the teams that we have to play four times uh, are, are very good. You know, uh, Bucknell, Lehigh, and, and then have, making the Southern swing. But as I said earlier, it, it's really, we're just happy that we're going to be playing a season and that we have a schedule in front of us. And, and even though it's challenging, uh, uh, the guys are working hard, they'll work hard and we'll be ready for it. I would imagine you being in your 26th year, the last thing you imagined is that you were going to have to run practices uh, so different than you ever have before. Uh, so this has to be probably the most unique year of your 26 years of coaching. Yeah, and I hope uh, that we don't face anything like this in my next 26 years. You know? <laughs> uh, just having to having to practice with a mask on, uh, you know, and um, you know, and the things that we have to to do to just have a practice. Uh, it, it is it's a challenge, but it, I, I can't uh, I can't underestimate the the fact that that our guys have been. In lockdown, we've been off since last spring and, and uh, then the summer and, and a lot of the fall. These guys are very happy to be in the gym and it's uh, and we'll overcome any of the obstacles that, that are in front of us. And, um, and as I said, I think that their enthusiasm for playing is, is at a high level. One more question uh, about your current team before we look ahead at your uh, future recruits. I'm sure everybody uh, is wondering how Justin Jaworski is. Uh, last year, having to leave the court with that serious injury. Uh, how's he doing? He's doing great, actually. Um, he is uh, ahead of schedule. As you can only imagine, um, Justin's doctor, I think, is the same doctor that had Kyle Lowry. And I think Justin's whole pitch was he wants to, he wants to progress faster than Kyle Lowry did. And I think he did that. He achieved that. He's, he's probably about 90%, I would imagine. Um, He's back on the court. He's playing. Uh, you know, we we uh, give him a day off now and then, just until he gets completely uh, back to 100. percent But for the most part, he's he's a joy to be uh, that we have him on the court, and and, um, and he's doesn't look like he missed a step. Actually, we've seen a lot of passionate basketball players uh, under your tutelage, and he's right up there at the very top. He just loves to play the game. But okay, time to take a look at uh, your new recruit. Recruits. We'll start with Chris Rabio and uh, John, you and Fran talk about him and take a look at some of the footage we have on Chris Rabio. Yeah, boy, I tell you, anybody who's been around Coach O all this time knows that uh, 
uh, you know, there's a there's a template for the kind of player he's looking for. This kid is six eight, six nine, and he can face the basket. You watch his footwork. Uh, he's a terrific passer. Um, I guess the modern day is a stretch four or whatever, but uh, here you see him just watch, you know, just quickness on defense, not bad long arms and then the finish, but uh, you know, any freshman is going to get a little bigger and a little stronger. And that's a scary proposition when you watch this young man play. Uh, and he's a savvy player, you know, uh, uh, once again, taking it hard to the basket and he wants to finish strong, but I just love his footwork. His footwork is, is outstanding. And the pick and uh, pick and roll and the pick and pop is such a big part of Coach O's system. And there you see him finishing in traffic. You know, Coach, when we were talking to Chris, I was asking him about his little point guard because his point guard is a heck of a player too. That's the footwork here. Great drop step. And I've seen you do individual work with your big guys. And uh, here, here's, he's like one of your post players right here in your system, you know, at the high post stepping out and he stretches the defense and boy, in your offense, you just love to have that lane open up. And the way to do that is to stretch that defense with big guys that can shoot. Watch the pick and pop right here. Little pick, little pop. If you're going to stay off me, I'm going to drain it. So uh, geez, coach, a lot to like about Chris Rebaio. Yeah, he's a, he's a trigger prospect. I, I believe he was at our, um, at our lead camp a um, couple years ago. Uh, he was 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and I liked him then at 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and uh, I even like him better at 6'9". Uh, so, <laughs> well, uh, you, saw him, you, you saw him set up the wing on that backdoor play right there, a little defensive uh, stuff he's right a, there. He's but... a basketball player. He's somebody that happens to, uh, you know, as we talk about positionless basketball, obviously he's not gonna be playing point guard, but he can make plays. He can play inside, he can play outside. Uh, he's a, he's really fits in the way we play terrifically, um, you know, and, uh, and who knows, maybe he's not done grown and maybe a, he's a little bit leopard thin right now, but, uh, we'll put some weight on him and, uh, his best days, I, I believe are ahead of him. Well, his skill set is just, is off the charts. And, uh, uh, you know, some things, uh, you know, some things that video can be deceiving, uh, but other things video can be revealing. He comes and from an athletic family. His dad played volleyball at Penn State um his brother played uh, for one of the top teams division three teams in the country at, at uh, Swarthmore um so he comes from an athletic uh, basketball family and uh and Chris Grundy is his coach does a great job with him uh so we're we're thrilled to have Chris in the fold well then let's meet him let's bring on Chris Rabio. Chris out of Skillman New Jersey six foot nine coach talked about him being a thin leopard he's 195 <laughs> Uh, coach is going to feed you. I can tell you that right now. We'll, we'll make sure <laughs> you get so up bad. over like 200 pounds. <laughs> Chris, it's good to see you. Good you know, you. what What we love to see about any big man, we love to see him not be big when he starts playing basketball <laughs> and learning all those skills outside uh, the paint area. And obviously by the video, you really have mastered a number of guard skills, forward skills. And yet now at 6'9", you can take that game inside. Yeah, I think um, Coach Grundy does a great job with us. He worked a lot with me, individual style freshman and sophomore year, just helping develop me into a more complete player. And because of that, I was able to get to where I am now. We have a complete player who graduated. So there's a, a little bit of a niche right there where someone like you, Miles Cherry, of course, did a lot of great things for Coach O'Hanlon. And uh, you are the kind of player I think that can develop into a Miles Cherry, a great understanding of the game, and certainly uh, the ability to take the ball to the basket. Yeah, that's the goal. You could do come from an athletic family, as Fran mentioned, uh, a basketball player who played at Swarthmore. Your other brother played baseball in college at Marist, and you've got a twin brother. What's your twin brother do athletically? He plays baseball. Um, he's a pitcher, and uh, he's trying to figure out where he wants to play in college still, but definitely is going to play somewhere. What made you uh, choose Lafayette? What, was, what were the things that enticed you to come to College Hill? I think for me, definitely um, finding a school with good academics for me was obviously important. Um, my family really prides or we uh, really value uh, good academics for a school and just how close Lafayette is for me. It's only an hour away, so my family can come and watch games and stuff. And just being able to walk around on campus. I mean, with everything that happened, that was really not a given for all of the schools that I was able to get recruited by. 
obviously academics are important. What are you looking at in terms of Lafayette helping you academically? As of right now, I'm looking to study economics when I get there, but I need, that could still change at this point. And your basketball season coming up, what, what is uh, happening with that? We're scheduled to start as of right now, practices on December 3rd, and then we'll start playing games late December. And we're supposed to have about 15 regular season games. So a lot shorter than a normal year, but anything that we can get at this point is great. How about, how about academically right now? Are you going to school, not going to school? Is it hybrid? Uh, it's been hybrid. So as of right now, it's split up by last name. So we'll spend two days out of school and then two days in school and it switches back and forth. Obviously, uh, you're looking forward to the basketball season. How about any, I mean, any other sports? Your brothers were baseball players. Did you play anything else? Um, growing up, I played baseball also. But um, once they started throwing curveballs at me, that's when I <laughs> Had to stop. It's like Coach O, the same thing. He couldn't hit the curveball. That's ball, exactly so. right. When that curveball came, it was time for me to go to another sport. So yep. what he does now, Chris, is he actually throws curveballs. So you want to be aware. You're gonna you're gonna be seeing all kinds of curveballs, but adjust. You gotta adjust. Yep. <laughs> well, that's why I became a pitcher, so I wouldn't have to bat. <laughs> yeah, you, and I'll tell you what, at six nine, I think you'd be a pretty formidable pitcher. Yeah, I was, I was, to I was gonna position. ask, Chris, is your is your brother as tall as you are, the pitcher? He's about six, 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 seven. So yeah, he's definitely up there. Your game obviously must have improved a great deal in the last couple of years. You were you were named the most improved player in 2018 and 19. Uh, did you sense the growth you had in your game and how it changed? Yeah, I think definitely coming in as a freshman, I was I've always been big growing up, so I learned a lot of post moves and stuff like that, and then just working hard in the off season and stuff like that. I was able to play varsity as a sophomore with a great group of 11 seniors around me. So I had, a, I had a lot of people teaching me what was going on and I was able to really see my value grow as a player and position on the team grow throughout the year. And I was lucky enough to be named the most improved player by the coaches. If we had a dunk contest, how many dunks could you put together? <laughs> We, we lost we lost, we, we lost your audio there, Chris. Try again, Chris. Well, See, we, we'd never be fortunate enough to lose John's audio. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> I can't believe I can't believe you beat Law back to the punch. I can't believe that. <laughs> like director, I'm you. I have enough to do handling him, Fran. Please. Our, our director John Sabino hit the wrong button. <laughs> Chris, you know, are you back I, with us? Yeah, I can hear you now. Chris, okay. you know, we never got your answer to your yeah. uh, repertoire of dunks. Oh, no, I'm not good with the flashy stuff. I'll get the ball in the hoop when I go up. That's all that matters. And that's key. Uh, They're called economy dunks. They're the, you don't want to waste any uh, unnecessary uh, effort. Hey, Chris, one question I had for you. How much, if any, uh, how many chances or how much have you been able to see Lafayette play? Uh, and, and did that factor at all into your decision? Um, when I was in the beginning of the recruiting process, I watched a few games, um, but overall, it's really just been highlights and stuff. And the biggest thing for me was I saw a lot of the similarities between what Coach O has going on here compared to what I do at Montgomery. So exactly. that was really something that I liked. And just knowing that I'll be able to play a similar role at Lafayette. Yeah, I, I oh. picked that up right away. Yeah. Yeah, when we watched those highlights, we saw you perform some of the things that are obvious in coaches uh, offense, the back cuts, the passes, the going to the basket. Uh, I think you'll be a perfect fit coach. Uh, I think you feel the same way. Oh, absolutely. As I said, I know he's, he's, uh, he's going to have a good season this year, but his best basketball, I think he's going to continue to improve because he, uh, he loves the game and he uh, has a real good feel, very good basketball IQ. And as you know, it fits well with how we play. Well, your job between now and when you come on campus is to put on the COVID-19. Add 19 <laughs> pounds, uh, come on campus and get ready, uh, not only to be pushed around, but, but do some pushing around yourself. Yep, that's well, right. I, I put on the COVID-19, so uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a consolation. But you don't have to go to the basket. <laughs> yeah, that's Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we'll welcome you to campus in, uh, in a very short time. Have a great senior year. Thank you.
Yeah, Chris. All right, that's Chris Rabio, uh, our first recruit. Our next one is Isaiah Thompson. And uh, John, talk a little bit about Isaiah. Well, you know what? I don't want to, again, I don't want to put any pressure on this kid, but, you know, I'm watching him. And it, Fran, I, I apologize ahead of time, but I don't want to invoke Tony Johnson's name too, uh, too lightly. But uh, I'll tell you what, Isaiah Thompson, he is explosive, explosively quick and uh, a great ball handler and finishes with either hand. But, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, when you have a kid that can do this, uh, you, you can take the scouting report against the press, uh, you know, out of the, out of the game plan. Uh, he's just so good with the basketball. And there you see, he just sets up teammates, uh, nice bounce pass to the open hand there. And uh, just uh, the thing I like best is he can do this. If you step off of him again, you can't be one dimensional in today's game. And uh, Isaiah has the ability to take it to the rim if you get up on him. And if you, if you step back off of him, he's going to keep you honest with his ability to shoot the jump shot. So I just love his athleticism, his quickness with the ball and his ability to finish around the rim. Um, again, if, if, which you can't tell what is a backdoor pass right here, re, very nicely, just kind of setting up his teammate coach will refine that a little bit and it'll fit nicely into the system. But, uh, he just sees the floor very well. There's a nice left-handed finish. I don't know, coach, what did you like best about his game? There was so much to it. He's so explosive. Yeah, there's, there's so much to like about, uh, Isaiah's game. First of all, he, he's a point guard that makes people better around them. As you said, he also can score the basketball. Uh, and, it, and in today's game, you, you need to be able to score as a guard. Uh, you, can't, you can't play if, there, if you can't score. Um, but he, he's a leader on the team. He's got a very good quickness. Um, he loves the game. He played at a high level with the EYBL. You know, he's playing for a very good coach um, in Joe Rulowitz right now, um, going to a terrific school in Petty. Uh, there's so many, so many aspects of his game. Uh, and his whole personality that, that we love. I know, was, was that a reach when I, I mean, I'm watching him and, you know, we all have a tendency to compare new kids to kids we've seen in the past. No, and, uh, not at all. Now, listen, as we know, I, I don't know if we've had anybody in the league uh, that has that had a senior year like uh, Tony Johnson had yes. uh, the second yeah. as well. Yeah. So that would be a, a lot of pressure, but he has a lot of those qualities as far as leadership quickness, ability to score the basketball and make people around him better. Um, you know, Tony was also a quick, a terrific rebounder. I mean, and, yeah, uh, he did everything. Stat sheet stuffer. He did everything. He, he could do it all. So um, we're, we're excited to have Isaiah in the fold. Um, and anybody that makes people around him better, like Isaiah does, is uh, somebody we need. Well, that's exactly why I surround myself with John. Uh, but let's <laughs> get to Isaiah Thompson. Isaiah, welcome to, uh, to Lafayette. Welcome to National Signing Day. And it, it's great to have you here with us. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the Petty School. I'm not sure many people at home are familiar with the Petty School and their basketball tradition. Yeah, I like it. It was a, it was a huge step up from my past school as far as like competition. We have a really good schedule over here. Play against some of the top schools in the nation. We're, um, we're located in central New Jersey, Hightstown. Mm-hmm. So it's not that far from home, about an hour and a half away from home. So I really like the transition to the Petty School. I know you are uh, also a volleyball player, and it, so it sounds like something you took up very late. But uh, I'm sure any basketball coach loves a young man who plays volleyball. It strengthens your legs. It strengthens your jumping ability. Is that why you did it, or did you just kind of fall in love with it a little bit? No, I, I wouldn't say I'm a volleyball player. I mean... I played freshman year because of the sports requirement. We had to play two seasons. So the school made me try it out. They saw that I could jump a little, made me an outside hitter. I mean, I had a little bit of fun. So that, <laughs> okay, so, but it did help you jumping, right? Helped your yeah. jumping ability. Um, Talk about why you, uh, why you decided to come to Lafayette. I know Fran O'Hanlon's personality is outstanding. Uh, that probably was one of the reasons. Definitely. I, I mean, I feel like it was a perfect fit on and off the court. You know, it's a great school academically and a great basketball program. You know, Coach Dyson and Coach O'Hanlon showed a lot of love from the beginning of my recruiting process. And during, during those like crazy months of quarantine, locked into the house, I had some great conversations with them. So the develop, developing relationships with them, you know, they spoke with my parents and everything was just great from there. 
I know you're a, a, a very good academic student. Uh, so obviously Lafayette's academics didn't scare you. No, not at all. I feel like I'm prepared for all the prep schools that I've been to. I've been going to challenging schools my whole life. I'm prepared for the academics at Lafayette. Fran, I, uh, I understand why uh, you were attracted to this young man, not only on the court, but off the court. Oh, yeah. As I said, Isaiah is a leader. He's been a leader. He's, uh, um, he's, he's the whole package, you know, and I think he'll fit very well uh, in, into leopard land here. Uh, we're excited to have him. Isaiah, what's your uh, basketball season look like? Uh, you, you guys have a full schedule? Everything's still up in the air, you know, nothing for sure yet. If we do, maybe in the beginning of February, we don't really know yet. Are you able to get on a court uh, almost every day and, and work out? Yeah, we're able to get inside the gym and work out. There's no contact yet inside the gym, but we could play contact outside. Well, I, w I wish you the best. I really, after watching uh, your video, I can't wait to, to have you excite everyone at the Kirby Sports Center. Uh, so have a terrific senior year, and uh, we'll see you right here on the Lafayette campus in a short while. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that is Isaiah Thompson. And, uh, Fran, another good job uh, recruiting. You lost four players. You have four brand-new freshmen playing this season. Uh, so you had some holes to fill with Miles and Lucas and Kyle and Cal. Um, yeah. But things look well, pretty thing good. About losing those four seniors, they were great uh, teachers in my program. Um, and, uh, you know, you don't realize that until you start practice again because we probably have half the team that has been through it, but half the team hasn't been through it. So losing those, losing those teachers is uh, presents a different uh, challenge to us. And, uh, our guys are responding well. I mean, and the guys that are here, uh, my returning players are doing a good job with uh, leading. Um, but you don't, you don't do that overnight. It doesn't happen. At you know, Coach, I, I, at the end of last year, um, I mean, obviously Leo O'Boyle just exploded. He, the, the light bulb went out for him, and he was, he was virtually unstoppable. Uh, but the kid that I thought made uh, as uh, as, as good a step is, is Neil Quinn uh, near the end. Has he, is he? Uh, uh, yeah, he's dealing with a, a foot injury right now, but he said uh, came back this year. Both those guys, both my sophomores, um, Leo's taking it to another level as well. I mean, uh, as you said, the last uh, half of last year, he was playing as well as most people in the league. Uh, yeah. And, um, and Neil has, has done the same. He's taken that step. He really is can, can score inside, outside. Um, as you know, John, some, a, a big guy that loves the game has a real chance. He loves the game. He loves to play. He loves to get better. He loves to get in the gym. Um, so we're excited about both those sophomores. Yeah, you can build around a kid like Neil, that's for sure. And it's a, it's a good start. And I love these. Uh, this class, uh, these, uh, these, these two kids are going to fit in nicely as well. Yes, they will. Both of them. Both of them uh, make people around them better. They're both leaders. They've been captains of their team. Um, so, and they're very good students. You know, uh, Isaiah comes from the Petty School, which is in the Maple, one of the top academic leagues. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, um, so we're, we're excited to have these guys. Uh, Fran, one more before you go, Gary, I'm sorry, but uh, is there any word from the NCAA or from our administration about how the uh, automatic bids will work? Is, is that gonna be the same if we have the season? Um, I mean, they're talking about, and I don't know what our league guys, I mean, as you saw our schedule there, John, and I, right. that's a question that I have because we're going to be some teams that we don't play this year, yeah. um, in, in, uh, uh, in our scheduled, uh, league games. So I, I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know whether the, uh, and uh, I guess that's something I have to find out. Uh, obviously we have a couple months. Because if, if you win the Northern Division, do you automatically get a bid at Southern right. Mid Central? I yeah. don't. And then you're also going to have an unbalanced schedule. There may be disruptions. So is it going to be your uh, uh, is it going to be uh, your winning percentage or the number of wins that you had? Um, so the, I think a lot of questions that, that need to be answered, and they may have already come up with it. I'm just you know I'm concentrated right now on on trying to get our team ready for the for the season, um, we'll, and this league, the schedule has just come out. Uh, we'll, 
uh, we'll we'll have a sit down and, and talk about that. But yeah, there's some unanswered questions, John. Um, and then, and you know, as and the as we know in the NCAA, they have said you have to play a minimum of 12 games. I think it was to be eligible for the uh, an NCAA bid, but. I really think that that may be waived as well. If somebody plays 11 games, for example, and it's done very well, who right. knows how that's going to Or has a uh, game canceled because of COVID, yeah. yeah. Too. Or it's not their fault, you know? Um, right. you know so there's some unanswered questions. Um, but as I said earlier, I, I do think for us, getting ready and practicing each day is, is a godsend. We're... Uh, the uh, guys are excited about it. They're excited that they have a season planned and whatever, uh, whatever lies ahead, we'll, we'll meet that challenge. Fran, you have two guys here who are just as excited. We are uh, ready to go. We can't wait. Uh, I know you have Lehigh on January 2nd and then you have Lehigh at home on January 3rd. Uh, so we'll have an opportunity to see you. Uh, yeah, that'll, when, be, that'll be interesting with the schedule Gary, for sure with uh, playing teams back to back. Cause you know, obviously, you know, the adjustments will have to be quick. It'll be on the fly. You know, you have a, you have a game and you, especially like if you're playing Navy away and then you come back and you got to play Navy, yeah. you're going to be on the bus and trying to, but one of the things that I've tried to do as a, as a coach that we, we play against every, every practice, different actions. I kind of call them that whoever we're going to play that we've seen these actions and we've practiced against the actions and, at the end of the day, it's going to be just about matchups and who we match up with uh, uh, more than worried about what plays they run. Uh, it's going to be more the actions they run. Well, I can't think that there are too many things you haven't seen in your 26 years as a head coach. So if anybody yeah, has a slight COVID. advantage, I, I think you do. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. What I want yeah. to see right now is the end of COVID. That's what I yeah. want to say. Well, don't we all? Don't we all? Well, that has been National Signing Night instead of National Signing Day. You've met the five recruits on the women and men's side. And uh, John, I know you and I can't wait to sit side by side, whether they put a plexiglass between us or not. Uh, we're care. ready to go. I don't care. Well, you've been asking for that something in between us for a number of years now. But uh, Gary, I'll tell you what, when the news came out, we were actually in a different conversation uh, just this past week when all of a sudden you got the email about the Patriot League announcement and I'm telling you, it was uh, it was a gift. It was just so great to have something to look forward to. Uh, and the Lafayette basketball season, yes, is on the horizon. And I put my order into the engineering department to create a soundproof booth, but I don't know whether that's <laughs> going to come true or not. John Sabino has been our director. Thanks to Brian Ludroff, of course, Scott Morris and his whole team for putting this together. We hope you've enjoyed our national signing night on the Lafayette Sports Network. For John, for me, I'm Gary Laubach. Good night, everybody.